What's up guys, Stefan here, s &E's Garage. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing and review of the X-Tool IP616. All right guys, so here's the box that the IP616 comes in. So inside, it actually has a very nice black carrying case. Lay this guy down and open it up here, see what we have inside the case. So it's gonna come with a little packing list things it should come with. So here we have our USB adapter and then it comes with several different adapters for it uh, depending on which country you're in. Obviously this is going to be the one that we are going to use so we will go ahead and snap it into place so that we have that for the next time we need it. Um, it's going to come with a USB to USB cord to go ahead and plug it into your computer. Here's going to be your OBD2 DLC connector, and then, um, but let's go ahead, turn it on. So while it's booting up, I'm gonna go ahead and read some things uh, right off of their website. This comes with free lifetime updates. It, it updates over Wi-Fi, so you connect it to a Wi-Fi network. Every time you turn it on, it's gonna check for updates. It'll do 31 advanced maintenance services um, and the special functions menu, such as ABS bleeding, key programming, oil reset, DPF uh, regen, injector coating, uh, VGT, which variable geometry turbo relearn, EGR relearn, AC relearn, power balance, TPMS, high voltage battery, uh, transmission programming, things like that. Like we just said, it does key programming. Um, it'll flash hidden functions, like for example, with Toyotas and Lexuses, there's different menus in there to you know change remote window down. Um, different things like that. Um, it'll do an all system diagnosis, so it'll run every single system that your car has, whether that's anti-lock brakes, forward collision avoidance, um, you name it, it'll, it'll program it, it'll talk to it. Um, it does eight in one graphing, so you can basically choose eight different PIDs at a time um, and graph them, which is perfect for when you're trying to diagnose something. Um, I've used that a hundred times in the dealer. Um, Let's see what else. It can export the data that you graph uh, to your computer. Um, it'll work in 14 languages and it comes with premium hardware. It's a seven inch screen, um, Android 10.0. It's got two gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of read only memory, 500 milliamp hour battery, and it's got dual frequency Wi-Fi, 2.4 and five gigahertz. So let's go ahead, and let this thing do its thing. We're gonna go ahead and select English. Hit next. We're gonna connect it to my Wi-Fi here. Let me just type the password in really quick. Now, if you have any compatibility questions on if this will work for your vehicle or do the specific function you're looking for it to do on your vehicle, uh, please reach out to xtoolstore at outlook.com. That is their email address. I'm gonna type it down in the video. All right, and it looks like like I said, it does. It has updates for life for free, and we have 133 updates to do. So we're just going to go ahead. We're going to hit the update all button. We're going to let this thing go through its motions. Right now, it's got 91% battery, uh, but just for the sake of what we're doing here, let's go ahead and use our USB cord here. We're going to plug it in, and uh, we're going to let it update. Now, like I said, it's connected to Wi-Fi. It's, it's this easy. You click the update button. It does the updates for you on the fly. And realistically, you can still use it while it's updating, but we want to do this review with the latest and greatest software that Xtool offers for it. So we'll let it do its thing here and we'll be back with you when it's done. All right, guys, so what we have here is all of our software up to date. And here we have a 16 foot extension. This is a DLC or an OBD2 extension cord. Um, we're gonna be testing this both on an American V8. This is a Ford Mustang with a five liter Coyote. So this is a, a domestic market vehicle. And uh, then we're gonna go ahead and test it on our Lexus. This is a Japanese V8 made by Toyota Lexus. Um, so I figure this would be a good uh, comparison here because we're going to be testing this on vehicles that are built you know on opposite sides of the world and uh, it, it's basically going to show you that this thing will work on both 
American cars and not so American cars. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's get the umbilical cord ran to the Mustang. Let's get you set up on here and we're gonna do this in real time. All right guys, so we went ahead and connected the DLC to the car with our extension cable. Now we're going to go ahead and plug this into the IP616 here. And it just simply plugs in. And then you tighten up your two thumb screws. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go to auto scan. And let's see what populates here. Now we do have the key on for the Mustang, so it is just going to go ahead and run its thing. You're gonna see here, it's 2013 model year vehicle, 5.0 liter Mustang, there's our VIN. We're gonna go ahead and click OK. And let's just go ahead and let it do an automatic scan. And it's gonna go ahead and scan all of the modules in the car. And you'll see just how quick it's actually going. It's already gone through 11 out of 15 modules. All right, so now we can go ahead and go to DTC report. And we're gonna see a couple of different codes here. Uh, we have power supply, event anti brake system, battery voltage low, uh, program the remote control again. Uh, so it looks like the battery went dead on this thing, which now that I think about it, it did from, from sitting. I didn't have the battery tender hooked up um, quite as early as I should have. So it is showing us some battery voltage codes in here. So now let's go ahead and we're gonna go back and we're gonna clear all of these, just that easy. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go back. We're gonna exit auto scan. And uh, let's kind of play around on here a little bit. So first let's go into system selection. Let's try going into powertrain control module. And let's go to live data. The engine is not running right now. Um, so we're not gonna be able to look at too much. Maybe I'll crack that garage door and fire it up and we'll look at some data. So you can see here, there's a bunch of different PIDs. Now, like I told you before, you can graph up to eight of these PIDs. So let's go find something uh, here that we can graph. Let's see what I want to graph here. Let me grab some and we'll be right back with you. All right guys, so what I selected here, I selected four different PIDs. Uh, actually, I might have done more than four. There's six of them. Um, and these PIDs that I selected are, are actually super common PIDs for diagnosing uh, variable valve timing issues. So what we're going to be graphing here is the desired um, angle of the intake and exhaust cams compared to the actual. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click custom and then we are going to go to graph. And what you're gonna see is position of actual B exhaust camshaft bank one, position of actual B exhaust camshaft bank two, and then desired variable camshaft timing exhaust and intake. And then we have position of intake A and intake B or and take A, bank one, and bank two. So let's go ahead and fire the car off and take a look at this. So I'm hoping that you guys can hear me over the car idling, but you'll see here that our desired is zero degrees, zero degrees uh, for intake and exhaust. Right now our exhaust are at about zero, and then our intake is doing the same thing. Now, where this would be useful is if you have a cam timing code, say a P011, a P0011 or a P00112, uh, you know, over advance, over retard, things like that. You can actually graph this and see what cams are doing what. And that is where this is, this is paramount. This is awesome. This is a great tool to diagnose your car. Now we can also just look at the regular PIDs here. We can graph a couple of different things too. We can go to engine RPM. Let's try to find that. Custom graph. So what you're graphing now is the expected idle speed. It wants it to be at 749. And you can see it here, revolutions per minute of engine. And you can see it kind of fluctuating. Now I'm gonna go ahead and blip the throttle. Let's see what it does. see there is our graph spiked. So now I should be able to pause it and we can see our spike there where it maxed out at right around 1950 RPMs. So the graphing 
feature on this uh, IP616 is actually pretty good. Let's just take a look at some of the other things we have here. We have anti-lock brake, we have restraint control module, uh, generic electronic module, smart junction box, so it's basically like the, it's a smart junction box. It's kind of what has all the relays and stuff in it that you know tells the car what to do and when to do it. Uh, you have your body control module, instrument panel control module, which is the, the gauge cluster, air conditioning, audio control, accessory interface, front control interface, um, and you know you can read on GPS, interface module, front display, occupant classification, parking aid, power steering. Um, so this thing will quite literally talk to everything. So let's go in there, try to go to ABS, and let's go to live data. We should see uh, things like wheel speeds, things like that. Speed of motor, engine's off right now, so it's gonna be zero. But these are just all of the PIDs here that you can look at and graph. So now we're gonna to try to go into special functions here. Special functions. Uh, let's see what we have here. We have key programming, so this is obviously a Ford, so it's going to try to talk to it. Okay, so now if you can either go by type, which is a mobilizer, smart key, uh, the pin code, or the keyless code, or you can go by vehicle, uh, where North American, and this is just an immobilized key. Um, and then you would obviously go to Mustang, wherever that is. Mustang, right there, duh. So we would click that. You would click, this is a 2013, so you go 210 to 14. Um, and basically, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to screw the keys up, but it has the functionality to go ahead and program keys on this Mustang here. Now also here in special functions, we have instrument cluster, we have power balance, uh, transport mode, uh, TPMS reset, air fuel ratio reset, high voltage battery, gearbox max, um, gearbox match, sorry, gear learning. You'll see it's, it's got all kinds of different things that we can do in here. So just for the hell of it, I like power balance. So let's go into power balance. We have a Ford. Two thousand thirteen. Okay. System selection, powertrain control. Special functions, power balance. Okay. And let me go start the car, hang on. Now in power balance, what you're basically gonna do is you're gonna disable one cylinder at a time. You'll hear it drop out and then you'll see it drop out. So right here you can see it dropping out. Let's go ahead and drop out cylinder number five. See it right there. Okay, cylinder four. And so on. All right guys, our umbilical cord is now plugged into the DLC on the Lexus. Let's just go ahead and into auto scan. Let it do its thing. We'll do a full system check. We're just gonna go ahead and select Lexus. Okay, we're going to go to North America, radar cruise, okay, automatic scan, and we're going to let it do its thing. And I just want you to notice how quickly it is running through these modules. There are 43 modules that it needs to check, and in the time that we are talking right now, it will finish all 43 of them, which is crazy. Just like that, we're all done, and it looks like we have a clean bill of health. Not that I expected any different, this is a Toyota product. Now this will do many of the same things that it did on our Mustang here on the Lexus as well. So instead of going to automatic scan, we're gonna to go to system selection and you can see we can go into the engine, the electronically controlled transmission, radar cruise, ABS, TPMS. Um, the possibilities are endless here. So let's see, let's see what's on left front door here. So you can go to read trouble code, you can go to live data. Let's just see what kind of 
data here the left front door computer has. I'm strictly curious. So you'll see all the buttons and switches. It'll tell you if they're being pushed or not, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's go all the way back and see what kind of special functions we have here. ECU configurations. Uh, so right now, if we go to Asia, see Lexus. North America, automatic. Radar cruise, let's see what's on radar cruise. Wow, okay, so there's actually a lot of stuff you can change here. You can change the units. We can go into the air conditioning. Let's see what's in the air conditioning here. Evaporator control, compressor mode, foot defroster auto mode. There's a lot of things that we can change here. Wow, seat. Let's see what's in seat. So you can set the, set the sensitivity here of the seat heater and cooler on both the driver and the passenger seat. We can go ahead into power windows. I always like messing with the power windows because you can turn on the, uh, the roll down feature on the remote, things like that. I'm pretty sure it's already turned on in this car because I've used it in the past. Yep, door key power window up, door key power window down, driver auto up. Let's try illuminated entry. Wow. This is wild. There's so many things you can change on this car.